Well, it's an anniversary. The Broadway musical Cats has been playing in Los Angeles for a full year now. That's a milestone in local theater, and it has inspired our inspired our <laughs> entertainment editor, David Sheehan, to take a closer look at this hit show about animals that has fascinated humans as well. And this is a special series you're beginning today, Dave. Today is part one of a three-part series. All right, hey. and, you know, Cats actually began way back in 1982 in London, and then after that in New York. And uh, when it first started, there were those who swore a musical using lyrics made up of nothing but T.S. Eliot's poetry about the human qualities of cats, set to music by Jesus Christ superstar composer Andrew Lloyd Webber, and brought to life on stage by a bunch of performers in cat costumes, would never, never last. Obviously, Cats has indeed lasted, breaking box office records and winning dozens of awards in the process. But there is one thing Cats has not done. It hasn't produced any stars at all. And that, I think, is partly because many of the show's most energetically infectious numbers get that energy from the elaborately staged unity and harmony of the entire cast. So more often than not, the ensemble is the star of Cats. But even an ensemble show like Cats isn't just an ensemble show. There are half a dozen starring parts in Cats, like Grizabella, the once glamorous cat living on her memories, Deuteronomy, the grandfather cat dispensing his wisdom, Mistopheles, the conjuring cat dazzling everyone with his magic, and Gus, the theater cat with his adoring sidekick, Jelly Lorem. A twosome as terrific as many other darling duos that made stars out of the people who played them. And he says as he scratches himself with his claws. Well, the theater is certainly not what it was. But as delightful as the Gus and Jelly Lorem duets and cats may be, they're still in cats, which means they look like cats, not like stars because that's what makes the magic that makes the show a hit. But it also makes a mixed blessing out of what would usually be pure joy for the young actors who play Gus and Jelly Lorem, Norman Large and Sally Spencer. For them, coming to work every day in a hit show and having a job that's already lasted a year is the kind of long-term weekly paycheck employment performers dream of. This dream, however, has a disappointing side because nobody really knows who they are. It's the hard thing, I think, about this show. Yeah. yeah, it's a hard thing, particularly if you're interested in uh, in making something happen uh, in other areas of the industry. If you were more recognizable, it would be much easier to get something going elsewhere. That is hard. Last week uh, we went to see Tap Dance Kid, and a couple days later, one guy who really made an impression on me was here, yeah. and I yeah. saw him in the hall, and I ran up to him, recognized him immediately, and said, "You know, you were wonderful. You're fantastic." <laughs> well, of course, he liked that. That never happens to us. Because no one knows who we are. It never I did happened. the same thing with him, and he turned around to me while I was actually in makeup and said, all right, now, which cat were you? Uh, <laughs> so the anonymity certainly does exist yeah. there. Anonymity or not, they do seem to love the parts they play, even though it takes hours of makeup and costume preparations before the performer who walked in the door is ready to walk onto the stage. I go from playing a very, very old and then fade into a dream of my past from that old cat. I like my part better than all the parts in the show. I think it's the greatest part to do. I have a nice thing, too, because uh, the, two, the two characters that I play in our number are very contrasting. In the first character, I'm introducing Gus, the theater cat, and then I run off and make a real quick change, such a quick change, and there's no access to the stage on that side. Uh -huh. So I have to run all the way around the lobby and do the change in the lobby and become this part of his fantasy, which is this big, white, fluffy, kind of sexy cat. So it's still better than being uh, out there just waiting for the agent to call, huh? Oh, you yeah. bet. Oh, 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 much, much, oh, much better. Yeah. All my friends that are waiting tables hate me. <laughs> 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 they deal with their dilemma with a sense of humor, I guess. Tomorrow, we'll meet the, uh, the lady who sings the big hit song, Memories, oh, and the man who plays beautiful. the magical Mr. Mistopheles. At least they don't get bothered by hordes of autograph seekers, right? That's true, they yes. They okay. do have their they privacy. Want to. <laughs> we'll look I don't think they want their privacy, but they have it. Thank you, David, very much. Okay, Kirsten and I have been waiting for this. David Sheen's here with the second part of a series on the human side about the musical Cats.
Speaking of parts, do you know there are actually 26 parts in Cats played by people whose names aren't really known and whose faces aren't really seen. Because the very nature of the show itself denies them the kind of recognition they so richly deserve for creating captivating characters like Grizabella, the once glamorous cat who's become a symbol of the toll time takes. But even with a show-stopping hit song to sing, the actress playing the part, Kim Criswell, hasn't really become famous because of Cats either. Well, I'm just as anonymous as everybody else, but um, that's what I expected, really. I didn't expect it to be any different than that. Mm -hmm. It's just too hard. It's, the, it's so weird what we're doing. Well, what's it like, though, as, in terms of performing, in terms of the satisfaction? What really I enjoy the most is if I hear, during the song, I can hear the audience, if I hear them sniffling, if I, you know, if I know they're crying, if I can see that they're moved by it, that's what I'm trying to do. Because the audience is not expecting someone in the show to be moving and to be so human. I remember a time I knew what happiness was. Let the memory live again. It's, it's anybody who, who used to be beautiful and, and got old. It's any of those people. The other surefire show-stopping role in Cats is Mistopheles, the conjuring cat, who gets the kind of introduction strictly reserved for starring parts. Oh, well, I never was the helper. I got so clever as magical miss. Mistopheles. George de la Pena has been playing Mistopheles for a year now after leaving Mikhail Baryshnikov's American Ballet Theater in hopes that performing in L.A. might lead to some Hollywood recognition. I get to show off my dancing in this show. But uh, you know, if people didn't know me, they'd be hard-pressed to pick me out. You know, you're anonymous, but uh, uh, I deal with it, you know. I find a lot of uh, pleasure in actually making that transformation. And that transformation is so intricate, he had to learn to do his own makeup, according to very specific blueprints. One of many new tricks De La Pena has learned during his year as a cat in Cats. I'm glad to be learning new things, yeah. you know, being able to do other things, to go out and have the opportunity to sing, yeah. which was uh, quite a, a strange step for me. I had never thought I would sing. Acting out those magical powers on stage is De La Pena's greatest pleasure, he says, because the performer in him can identify with the character he plays. He's somebody that's uh, dying for attention, so he uh, does all these magic tricks, and he's always into some mischief. So finally, he gets a chance to not just do mischief, but to do something important. So he has to use all of his magic powers to make old Deuteronomy return. And uh, old Mistopheles has uh, got a case of the nerves here, but he figures he'll whip himself up into a frenzy, so he spins a lot <laughs> and uh, produces old Deuteronomy. And that's his big trick. Magical Mr. Mistopheles. Tomorrow, magical Deuteronomy. All right. See the man behind that role. Very okay. good. Thank you, David. Today, in the final part of a series, David Sheehan says we're finally really going to understand the human side of cats. He has a performer who can help us understand that and help us understand what the biggest Broadway hit since Chorus Line is really all about. And I guess it's not really that understandable, as it turns out. I mean, uh, nearly everyone knows something about cats by now, but even many of those who have seen the show don't always realize what it is supposed to be about, including myself when I first saw it. And who could be better qualified to explain the meaning of cats than the actor who plays the wisest cat of all, the grand old leader of the tribe himself, Old Deuteronomy. He's the one all the other cats look up to because he's lived all nine of his lives and has the wisdom and sense of humor to prove it. Go back your memory 
shall a jog and say your cat is not a dog. In human terms, he's in his 70s or 80s, but the actor playing the part is a talented 30-year-old named George Anthony Bell, a young man who loves small children so much, he entertains them during intermissions at every cat's performance and a well-established actor and singer who doesn't really mind being unrecognizable in his character makeup. Some of the people in the show, unfortunately, have really thankless roles where you just, because the makeups and everything is so similar, it's hard to recognize who they are. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, luckily, I have a part that once I hit the stage, you know who I am. <laughs> this is not my first show that I've uh, done heavy makeup. I did, I was the lion in The Wiz. And I played Eartha Kitt's husband in Timbuktu, which was very heavy makeup. And I never play my age, so I'm aware of that. And, and I, I have a lot of tenacity and stick to itiveness and I, I stick with it. And I mean, this is my love. I didn't seek to perform. It, it just kind of happened. And, what do you mean? Well, I mean, I, I was taking an acting class, a theater acting class to f fulfill a general ed requirement in college. And just from there, I had so much fun, it just went from one show to the next until I decided, well, I, let me try it for a professional show. He's not only had more than his share of professional roles since then, Bell's character now in Cats embodies the real meaning of the play. You've learned enough to take the view that cats are very much like you. The basic plot is that one night a year, our particular tribe of cats, which is, which is the Jellico cats, we meet in this special place. Mm -hmm. And that particular night, my character, Old Deuteronomy, selects one cat to have another life. And, and so we have this big ball, which is the Jellico ball, which is that long 14-minute dance number that they do. And that really kind of sets off all the activity uh, from that moment on. Oh, magical cats. Why is uh, Grizabella your choice for the new life? Um, because at the end of the first act, uh, when I see how the, the, all the other cats react to her, that's my first time observing that. And when they all leave, and I stay there and I observe her, and I hear her sing memory for the first time, I understand the pain that she's going through and, and that she's trying to reach out. It's just obvious to me that she has to be the cat to be chosen, but I want all the other cats to, to want her to be picked up. Yeah. So when that time happens, they really, they know that she's got to be it, and they, they really realize, like, oh, we didn't know she had this much pain. So as it turns out, there are more human sides to cats than even I ever thought about. I'm wondering if the actors think all of us in the audience are so dumb because we're not figuring this one out. No, not really. I think they're, they're aware of the fact that the lyrics are T.S. Eliot poetry, and mm -hmm. that's the only way you really can understand and, and get the message of what's going on. And, and it's, it's hard to understand T.S. Eliot even if you read him, much less hear him or vocally. And then on top of that, hear him being sung to music by Andrew Lloyd Webber. It is difficult. You know, it doesn't really matter, though, because it's such a wonderful spectacle. Yeah. And now uh, we know, because you've told us. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And now we can see it again. <laughs> That's right. You understand it. That's right. And thank you very much for being with us this afternoon.